Hello folks, Lord Reads with you once again. Uh, I'd like to do a reading from the book of James, simply because I've always wanted to study the Bible and read the whole Bible at some stage in my life. And when I was a young youngster, about 2021, 20, I was working as a as a, a trainee auditor at Blacktown City Council. And there was a lovely old chap there who would uh, single me out and two or three other youngsters in training there. And he would always preach to us how good the book of Hebrews was. And he would urge us to read the book of Hebrews. And we weren't overly religious back in those days. And not many are in their early 20s, unless they've been raised in the goodness of the church from a young age. So anyway, um, it was a lot of water off of a duck's back to us. And um, only in recent times, at the ripe old age of 61, did I have a close look at the book of Hebrews and realised it wasn't very long. It were, there's only 13 chapters in it, so you can knock it over pretty quick. So after I do the book of James, which isn't very long at all either, um, in our next video, we'll do the book of Hebrews and we might break it up into two parts because it should only take 40 minutes to do the whole book of Hebrews and about 15 minutes to do the book of James. So let's have a crack at James, shall we? Miraculous, revolutionary, greatest ever. We are inundated by a flood of extravagant claims as we flip the television dial or magazine pages. The messages leap out at us. This, of course, is a preface. This is not actually how the book of James starts. It's a preface from um, a Bible that I'm reading from. is a good one Steve Mackey gave me. And it is the Life Application Study Bible, Leather Bound, New International Version by Zondazan. Zondazan. Um, and this is their, their um, preface to the beginning of the book of James, which is worth sharing. Miraculous, revolutionary, greatest ever. We are inundated by a flood of extravagant claims as we flip the television dial or magazine pages. The messages leap out at us. The products assure us that they are new, improved, fantastic and capable of changing our lives. For only a few dollars, we can have cleaner clothes, whiter teeth, glamorous hair and tastier food. Automobiles, perfume, diet drinks, mouthwash, they're all guaranteed to bring happiness, friends and the good life. And just before an election, no one can match the politicians' promises. But talk is cheap and too often we soon realise that the boasts were hollow, quite far from the truth. Jesus is the answer. Believe in God. Follow me to church. Christians also make great claims, but are often guilty of belying them with their actions. Professing to trust God and to be his people, they cling tightly to the world and its values. Possessing all the right answers, they contradict the gospel with their lives. With energetic style and crisp, well-chosen words, James confronts this conflict head-on. It is not enough to talk the Christian faith, he says, we must live it. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? The proof of the reality is our faith, a changed life. I'll read that again. The proof of the reality of our faith is a changed life. Genuine faith will inevitably produce good deeds. This is the central theme of James's letter around which he supplies practical advice on living the Christian life. James begins his letter by outlining some general characteristics of the Christian life. Next, he exhorts Christians to act justly in society. He follows this practical advice with a theological discourse on the relationship between faith and action. Then James shows the importance of controlling one's speech. James distinguishes two kinds of wisdom, earthly and heavenly. Then he encourages his readers to turn from evil desires and obey God. James reproves those who trust in their own plans and possessions. Finally, he exhorts his readers to be patient with each other, to be straightforward in their promises, to pray for each other, 
and to help each other remain faithful to God. This letter could be considered a how-to book on Christian living, which is why I'm reading it uh, today, the book of James, with you. I want to share it with you. Confrontation, challenge and a call to commitment await you in its pages. Read James and become a doer of the word. Genuine religion. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, two of the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Trials and temptations. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he's dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Listening and doing. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Two ears, one mouth and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Chapter 2. Genuine Faith My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favouritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet, or have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith 
and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whomever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish man. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to, his, to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. We'll have a little break now. We'll come back to do chapter 3 in James um, after a little break. Thank you for watching. Stand by now for part 2.